Okay, so moving on here, we have created our function and now we're going to start talking about main. In the exercise instructions, I am suggesting these variables. It does look like a lot of variables, uh, and it is, but it's because of, you know, we're tallying up the number of A's, B's, C's, and so on. So there's five variables right there and then another five for the percentages of A's, B's, C's, and so on. So most of the variables are because of this kind of busy work here. But um, so anyway, uh, you know, I'll give you the variables on the actual exam as well, suggested variables, and you really can just copy and paste those right into the code if, if you feel like it. So let's look at the code here. So we're told create the variables and then get the number of students from the user. We talked about an input validation loop to make sure they enter between 1 and 24 students. So let's talk about that. So uh, here I've just copied all those variables into, uh, uh, pasted those into main. And um, so we have this num students variable, right? And it says here, um, while num students is less than one or num students is greater than 24. So we're isolating that range of uh, 1 to 24 students. So anything less than that or anything more than that, I'm just going to keep asking them again, how many students? How many students? Uh, we can use C in because it's just a number here. So we can just get that input with straight C in. So uh, we can put that in a loop, as I said, so just to make sure they enter the appropriate number of students. Okay. And then um, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so once the user enters an appropriate number of students, write a separate for loop to run that many times, like num students number of times. So if there are five students in the class, I want that for loop to run five times. If there are only three students, it's going to run three times and so on. So inside the for loop, we will prompt the user for the midterm and final grades, okay, and then we'll pass those to the function. So let's take a look at that. So we have the loop set up here. Look at that running num students number of times. Okay. So uh, just and getting the midterm and final grades from the user. You know what? Let me uh, show you something here. Okay. Notice the t imp the prompts are kind of tailored. Like I said, there were five students in the class. Enter midterm grade for uh, student one. Enter final grade for student one. And then we move on for student two, for student three. So the, the output or the program behavior is kind of slightly customized. And you can see how we can do that. Enter midterm grade for student I. I'm using the loop counter here in the output stream. Okay, the loop counter to get that effect, that one, two, three, four, five, or however many students there are. Okay, and just using C in and uh, to uh, handle that input for the midterm and final grades. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're passing the midterm and final grades to the function. Okay, we talked about the function in the last video. And this is the call to the function. Hey, you get letter grade. It's your turn to run, to execute, to do your thing. Here's what you need, the midterm and the final, which we just got from the keyboard, right? So those are being passed to the function, right? And they're coming through the door here. I'm up at the function. They're coming through the door. We're going to average them together and get the students average for the semester. And then we're going to, based on that average, assign a letter grade, A, B, C, D, F, and then we're returning that letter grade back to main. I can't stress this enough. When you return a value from a function, you got to put it somewhere, got to put it somewhere. And so I've put it into this L grade variable, which was in the um, variables that we created up at the top here. Uh, we had num students, we have the midterm and the final, and then look here, um, L grade. That's to uh, to receive that return grade, that, that letter, the A, B, C, D, or F from the function. And I'm capturing that return value in here. I think I'm going to end this video, and um, we'll pick it up again in the next video.